Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 29th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Steve. You'd be Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, during this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. Go ahead, send me an email, steve at tfn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And in our Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got the Dow. Let me get the uh, screen out here. There we go. Got all the indices in the uh, green out here. The Dow is up uh, 639 points. That's two and seven tenths percent to the upside. 24741 is the print. The S and P's up three percent. The NDX 100 up three and three tenths percent. The Russell up five and a half percent out there. So there's winners across the board. Spot volatility index is off two bucks, trading out at 31.55. Gold's off nine dollars. Silver is up. Up one penny lights we crude is up three dollars and forty three cents that is a nearly a twenty eight percent move to the upside natural gas pulling back a bit and treasury bonds basically flat out there let's go to our first caller it's brent in martinez california brent thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you today oh i'm doing just fine steve i hope you're doing well i am uh, i am thanks so much so u.s steel is on your mind i believe yeah, we were talking about it yesterday, and, of course, the clock was kind of running down, and then, you, I guess, lost the connection. So, I mean, I got definitely, I mean, you were getting into it pretty thoroughly. I just wanted to try to complete what, what's, you know, what we're talking about. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's go back to uh, U.S. Steel, folks. Let's get it up on the screen out here. We take a look at U.S. Steel right now, trading out at 815. It is above the uh, top of its uh, daily profile. So that's bullish. It's in between its uh, weekly profile. So right now, the next target level of resistance for you, Brent, is going to be 988. And take a look at the weekly time frame chart. Now, we'll come back and take a look at the daily. There was a level on the daily chart that price needed to close above or move above, and that's under attack today. That that would give you if price can close above this next level that I'll give you that brings that 988 into play on that weekly time frame. The level on the daily that you're looking at is seven dollars and ninety nine cents. We're trading at eight fourteen at seven ninety nine folks. That is where price most recently broke down. That would, in essence, be, if this were a counter-trend rally, where that should find resistance. So you'll want to watch, obviously, the end-of-day close out here. But any close above 799 uh, says that what U.S. Steel should do is head up towards that resistance level of the weekly time frame, the top of that profile. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. If price can get above that, Brent, then on the daily time frame, its next breakdown area is 1107. There's no topping patterns that are in play right now. We take a look at the daily time frame, just resistance, 799. As I take a look at the weekly time frame chart out here, it's got the profile level that we took a look at, 988. 
And above that, if price were to get above that, you've got a different level in the daily. On the weekly, the breakdown level would be 1396. So in essence, that's what I see when I take a look at it. There's nothing here on the monthly. Um, the monthly would tell you this. The monthly would say, if this is going to run out of steam, it's going to be at its red line. It's currently priced at 1009, but that number is going to change as price moves up or down out here. So, But right now, everything looks good, and I just would uh, continue to pay attention to 799 out there. If price is able to close above that, then you know you've broken. Uh, you've got, in essence, uh, a change in trend signal on U.S. Steel. Yeah, the only potential snafu, they've got their earnings are coming up on Thursday after the bell, so that was one of the things I was kind of looking at. I think I I just don't know about, you know, you can put a stop and doesn't mean it's going to, it could easily open the next day and, you know, just pass it by, so. I, yes, uh, uh, it, it can, um, you know, most certainly. Um, the, coming up with an A to B equals CD pattern on this one is pretty tough to do because there really hasn't been much of a retracement out there. I mean, if I were going to draw something in, uh, it would be probably this one here. My A point looks like March 16th might have been the low. And then I'd probably use the high out here from April 9th and then just a few day pullback, very shallow retracement into the low on April 15th. Well, it was a 36% retracement. Um, and uh, the B point out here that I'd be using would be April 9th, and that did about 20 million shares. And as price was passing through that, well, today you're at eight and a half million. Oh, that's interesting. So you do have light volume as it's taking out what I would use as a B point of an A to B equals CD. But, you know, if price can close above 799, you stick with it. You say you say that uh, earnings might be tomorrow on Thursday. Is that what you said? They're after the market closes, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you'd feel better if it had big volume behind it. But I, I mean, it, the, the chart looks good. The chart looks good. Yeah, it's a, it's kind of one of those. It's a little, you know, mixed bag. I mean, it looks positive at this point. If that can continue, and again, I've been watching some of these earnings. I don't do a lot of the fundamental stuff, but it seems to be that I think a lot of the, the you know, negativity has been factored in, and so you just don't know how they're going to react. I've seen earnings that are not that hot, and the stock seem to still be doing okay. I'm not I'm not sure that's as big a concern as it might be, you know, under regular circumstances. So I'll keep an eye on it. That was I guess the main thing I wanted to have you take a look at and yeah. kinda of touched on some of those levels I need to be watching and yet today we're above that one. Now do you on that seven ninety nine, are you looking for a second day above that, or do you kind of? You'd like to see that, yeah. You, you, you certainly yeah. would like to, see, yeah, you, Brett. You would like to see a second day above that, just to confirm that it's a real breakout above a key level of resistance out there. Um, but there was a couple days ago, Brent, when it gave you a nice bullish message, and that was when price was able to close above the top of its daily bearish structured profile, and that was on April twenty seventh, and uh, and then you closed above it yesterday. Obviously, you've got a third close above that. So so that is also another area where if it's going to struggle, um, that, that, that 701 level should have been it. In fact, if let's just say that uh, U.S. Steel offers very disappointing um, news, or however shareholders respond to whatever it is that they would say. Uh, the likely area of support on this, I would say, would be about the $6.72 level. And that's the center of that bullish or bearish structured profile that price was able to get above. So I would say that would be your downside. I'm not saying that's where it's headed. That would likely be the downside area for it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, Steve. I hear the music. Just uh, again, thank you very much. Have a great day. You bet. I will talk to you soon. Thanks for calling. That was Brent in Martinez, California, and that was U.S. Steel, ticker symbol X. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading 
trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other Tigers and Tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up uh, 650. S&P is uh, 87. Let's go out to uh, Denver and speak with Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you uh, this morning? Great, Steve. Beautiful weather out here. It's, it's uh, finally. But uh, I've got uh, about 40 great. calls on ET, and they expire May 8th. And I just you're, wondered... You're, you're you're breaking up if a bit. You would, would you look at it. it repeat that. I, I, couldn't how would hear, I, I really couldn't hear anything. Is this resistance or should it, what are the chances of that getting through and filling the gap? Okay, so e ET is a ticker symbol that, that you're asking about. I think yes. your question I is. I have calls at five, five and a half, and six. Say, say it again. I own about 40 calls on five, five and a half, and six uh, calls there, and they expire May 8th. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, you've identified the area where this might struggle, and that is going to be that uh, gap, and that's going to be the 859 uh, area. Uh, the stock chart itself looks pretty good. So what, do, what does Stevie mean by that? Let's come over here and take a look at the um, – and so, folks, that first of all, that figure that uh, that I used, let me just come back in and take a look at that. This is where the stock had gapped to the downside. So the first level of resistance, so on March the 9th, this thing moves lower with 105 million shares, basically. And right now, it's got 24 million shares as it's trading up into that area. Uh, so it's not moving into that area with volume, and it may find – so think about it like this, folks. Uh, it, put your mindset. Uh, right, this is about the ability to take the other side of the trade. So put your mindset, there were uh, 104 million shares where those shares that were purchased, folks thought that that was a good value. And that was between the price area of seven bucks, uh, was 634 to 859. And how were they thinking on March 18th when price got down to 375? 
about a 50% hit. So a lot of those traders, uh, very possible, I uh, made that, uh, did that little prayer deal with God where they said, please, if you just give me back some or all of my capital, I'll be happy to just exit. Um, and so that really is, you know, is in essence what you are potentially up against, uh, Ron. And so okay. that 859, there's, I don't have a clue as to whether or not price will get through there, but let's go back to now the stock chart. I just wanted to explain to folks why I had uh, shown that 859 area. When we look at the stock chart itself, it formed a real nice bottom, a little hammer bottom that was on bar number nine of a TD9 count. So that's a nice thing. We don't see any kind of topping signal right now. Today will be bar number seven. Uh, we, you do know that it's bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine on that TD9 count where you can identify a top. So as price gets into that gap area, you could also be seeing a TD9 count pattern on the daily time frame. On the weekly time frame, this also made a TD9 count bottom out here. Um, and price is right now above the top of its weekly profile, so that's good, and which is at 744. And it's above Stevie's red line, which is good. And that just tells you it's going to deal with that gap. But it's but but these are these are these are nice bottoming signals out here. And uh, you know, it's going to make an attempt run to get through that gap, but can it? I don't know. If it can uh, then the target would be 1359. But I don't know if that'll make that target, even if they get through the gap by the time your calls would expire okay. out there. But but so far, so good, you know, when I take a look at the chart patterns. But well, both you and I and everybody else uh, who might also be in call positions recognize that that 859 area, you know, could be it, so to speak, or at least where you start to begin to see a pullback. Okay. Well, fundamentally, it, it goes ex-dividend next Wednesday, and it's a big dividend, around 32 cents for the quarter. Okay. And I don't know if some institutions will buy it to get that dividend. I think they will. We'll find out. Well, you're, you're, you're above nice resistance levels on the daily and the weekly, about to head okay. into another one, which is about uh, 53 cents away yeah, from where it's I'll, trading I'm right gonna now. I'm going to take some out there around that range. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate that. You bet. Thanks so much for calling. That Thank was Ron. You, yep, yep. That was Ron in Denver. Tarpon 2 in the Tiger's Den wants to take a look at uh, ticker symbol CACC. So let's go uh, pull that up. And uh, CACC is Credit Acceptance Corp. Used to be the old uh, GMAC. And uh, right now today, Tarpon, uh, this is trading above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. So this is day one above that. Bearish in structure because at 281.15. It's closer in proximity to the top where the sellers were at or are at 304.65, but they've gotten run over today versus the bottom, which is support. We can see that that support level was tested and held back on the trading day of April 22nd. Remember yesterday we talked about these uh, having these TAS market profiles as being a competitive advantage because what it, it just assists us with understanding the game. This is this is this is a game of understanding where buyers and sellers are at. That in essence was what Ron was asking, and we were able to use that gap to the downside to identify where sellers may also be hanging out. But if I turn off these profiles, I'll do that right now, and we're just looking at price. We're just naked. I'd just be guessing, uh, or I'd be giving you. Yeah, I'd be, I, I, maybe I would use some 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 other technical prowess and tools and so forth out here. But it's just so much easier to just trade by the numbers. And that's when we turn those profiles on. Now we're trading by the numbers and we've just added a competitive advantage to understanding uh, what the market is communicating to you and I. When you can take out resistance, it's kind of like, you know, if you're out working out or you're playing golf or you're playing tennis and you're just trying to get to the next level. Well, today, uh, Credit Acceptance Corp on its daily time frame got to the next level assuming that it can close above 304.65. So now we come back and just from a profile standpoint, take a look at where's the next profile. Well, that's gonna be the weekly. And the weekly tells us what? This tells us that where Credit Acceptance Corp should uh, run into resistance is gonna be 348.54. So Turpin, if you, I, I think you're saying you're short. If you're short, based on the profile charts, we don't see it, right? Um, I don't know if you're short or not. I might be reading into it. Uh, or you're asking maybe, is it a short or something? And my answer would be, at least looking at these charts, no. The first place where it might be a short would be in the 348 level, the top of that weekly profile. Now, 
I'll go take a look at Stevie's other charts and tools out here just to get a feel for if there's any other patterns that um, we might want to take a look at to consider for some type of top. No, I don't see it here. I don't have it on the daily time frame. So we don't have it there. Let's take a look at the weekly time frame. And again, we're just looking for topping signals. And the topping signal, if you were looking to do that, you'd want to see price close back below Stevie's red line on the weekly time frame. That's 319.50. If it closes back below that, well, then it's telling you, okay, a key level of resistance is held. So this will be on Friday where this number will be important. Because if you see a close above it on Friday, then chances are it wants to go and hit that 348.54 level, the top of that weekly profile. I'm going to take a quick peek here at the monthly. Um, I don't think there's anything out here on the monthly that's going to assist us there isn't uh, so I hope that that helps you out with regard to uh, G oh, I put in C yeah C A C C C A C C credit acceptance corp I hope that helps you out with regard to what its intentions are which looks to me like a move to the 348 54 level let's see here uh, a couple of questions that have come in uh, first one coming in from Johnny D and my apology my phone is not grabbed my email for some reason so if my sound is going out a little bit it's because I have to turn my 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 uh, uh, head over towards my laptop on another computer to read it so Johnny writes uh, with the news on Gilead's drug and the S&P possibly targeting the 3028 area oh I tell you what we've got to read that question we come back from this break. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed. And I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, so Dow's up 603, S&P 82 points. Uh, let's go back to uh, the question that came in here from Johnny. So Johnny, uh, what do we do here? Uh, Johnny wrote in, uh, with the news of Gilead drug and the S&P possibly targeting the 3028 area, are you still convinced that this is a counter trend rally and that the S&P will break the lows of March 23rd? Uh, and uh, Scott writes in, I see Scott writes in, he says, uh, hey, that call of moving uh, back to the uh, lows is a little shaky out there. So actually, I, I like that. The, the answer is yes. I don't have any reason to, I would have to absolutely ignore history. I mean, absolutely have to ignore historical chart patterns to believe otherwise. We've got to, re we've got to remember what we're looking at. So let's, first, let me just go back to the S&P out here. And so let's just, let's just be, again, let's just take a look at the numbers out here. The key level, the next key level inside the S&P 500, the cash indice, this is much like what Brent and I were looking at when we were just taking a look at U.S. Steel. It's going to be 2985.93, and we're trading at about 29.45 right now. Now, 29.85.93, that is the S&P's breakdown level. Uh, the I don't know where the, let me see here, the A to B equals CD side of this pattern. Uh, we'll start with the uh, low out here on March 23rd. It looks like the uh, B point on the S&P cash is March 31st, and it looks like the C point was the uh, low here of April 1st. And so the 30... The 3028 area, I come up with 3019 as being an A to B equals CD to the upside, the next uh, price projection. That's 1.272. Uh, but we do know that you've got resistance at 2985. 93. Uh, if there were to be a bearish reversal candle, then what we would have here is we would then end up having a Gartley sell pattern. Uh, at this moment, we don't have that. So we're just simply going to have to watch the 2985.93 level. So that's in the S&P 500. I'm going to switch over and take a look at the uh, Dow, which is really the big dog out here. It's the trophy horse for international. So what has the Dow done so far? Well, if we take a look at the Dow, what you're going to see just simply from a trend line standpoint is you can draw this on your own S&P chart or your Dow chart out here. You can, well, your S&P can draw it on, on each of them. But what I'm done here, I've, I've created a trend line coming off of the lows from 2016. And then my next connection out here, this is the shorter term trend line from December the 1st. And what we can see inside the Dow is price just made it right back. This would be the ideal counter trend rally area inside the Dow. But inside the Dow, Right now, well, let's just come back here and take a look at the at the uh, Dow out here. So hopefully I've answered your question, Johnny. I have different price targets than you. I'm going to suggest that you're going to watch at 29.85.93 level. If price can close above that, just like in U.S. Steel, then price should go on to the next level. The next level here, price projection-wise, is 30.19, and above that would be 31.74. Now let's go ahead and pull up the uh, chart for the uh, Dow itself. And uh, let's see if this also had a breakdown level. So this does. This also has a TD9 count breakdown level, and that's at 25,994.38. The Dow would have to get above that, uh, Johnny. The, the Dow would have to get above that, Scott, uh, to suggest that, uh, hey, maybe this is something different. Maybe this is something different than a counter trend rally out here. If we take a look at the A to B equals CD, so I'm going to draw this in here for the Dow. And what we're going to see is that price still hasn't hit the one-to-one -one A to B equals C D price target. Now, what this is communicating to me, what this is communicating to us, is that the trophy horse inside the market, and this is super important, this is gigantic important. Remember yesterday, um, I, I said, look, one of the most important things, I've gotten some emails from folks and there's, you know, hey, what should I learn first, this, that, or the other thing? And, and as I said to you, the most important thing that we need to do is be able to look at both sides of the trade out there. So that's a, that's that was number one. Number two, and maybe this is really number one, I don't know which one is, is, is first out here, but they are both, both substantially important. And that is what I see everybody doing when I say everybody, not you guys that are gals that are listening or what have you, you know, the the the, the news media, the, the boob tube group out there. What I see everybody doing, and this is this is the this is the this is the gigantic mistake that people make, is we think only in terms of ourself. Pretty stuck up, huh? Only in terms of ourselves. What does Stevie mean by that? We must think this is a global marketplace out here. 
and we're also dealing with now is a global problem. It's not that the health problem is the minimal issue out there. That thing has gotten so far overblown. I mean, well, I won't go into it. I could, but I've studied it really well both sides of that trade out there. There's the economic piece of this puzzle that hasn't even begun because the health piece of it just keeps consuming so much time out there. But with regard to the Dow, this is the big money. These are the big money players out here. And what we haven't even gotten to yet inside the Dow is even the one to one A to B equals CD to the upside. Don't be the S&P represents basically U.S. centric out here. The Nasdaq, the Russell 2000, it, they don't take this the wrong way, but really kind of the retail marketplace. I'm not saying that they don't make up holdings inside, you know, your portfolio or if you're managing uh, portfolios for others out there. That that, but I just in in general, if we can kind of break the break the, these into those categories out there and the most important category being what is going on globally out here and in the case of the Dow you can see it hasn't even made the one-to-one -one. this is telling you about the lack of confidence about the lack of confidence with that big ball of capital that floats around the globe out here now the breakout level inside of the Dow Jones or the breakdown levels, really what I should say, is at 25,994. Price would have to close above that to say that maybe there's something else. That, that, that you know what, that the markets are just simply going to ignore all of the past historical stuff. What is that stuff out there? Well, first, you know what, if you take a look at, uh, let me just do this, let me pull over this little slide here. Here's the Dow going back to 1929. The 1929 low, uh, and you'll see the A to B equals CD pattern. And I would have to say that people were saying the same things. They were thinking the same things that maybe, maybe the worst was over. And that, uh, geez, this was not going to be any type of counter trend rally. Here you can see the one to one. The Dow basically back in 1929, it was in 1930, April of 1930. And this is a weekly chart that we're taking a look at when it generated its Gartley sell pattern out there. And it did it just like the way that I've taught uh, each of you how to do this and selling the D point or Gartley patterns and the importance of bullish and bearish reversal candles. Here you can see the bearish reversal candle that confirmed that pattern out there. And of course, once it created, that was the Gartley sell. Here's what you can see is that uh, that just simply went ahead and we saw prices move lower into 1932. And what was taking place in 1932 was a was the GDP low during that time period. The GDP low did not come in 1929. It did not come in 1930. It did not come in 1931. It occurred in 1932. What transpired today? Well, we had our GDP went from positive to down to minus 4.8%. That was for the first quarter. Do you think that maybe the second quarter or third quarter or fourth quarter might have a lower GDP than what we just saw? I think the answer is yes. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in a tax opportunity zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. 
If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Uh, folks, let's go to our next question out here. This one coming in from uh, Hector and the fuel injectors, Hector and Patty. And uh, Hector uh, says, uh, since we are coming to the close of the month, can you please can you please give us your thoughts um, on the A to B equals CD on the monthly time frame? I use the twelve eighteen as A point and two twenty as a B point and three twenty twenty as a C point. So let me just uh, come back out here and let's try to draw in what uh, Hector is doing. So for the A point, you're using 12 of 2018. So as your A point, 12, okay, I see what you're using. And for your B point, you're using, let's see, C point, you're using 320. So, yeah, so that's 32018. Okay, I, so I, I guess here's here's the A to B equals C D that you're drawing in here. So uh, as, as what it looks like to me. So the A point back here, December of 2018, your B point you're using as your as the high from February. Is that right? Yeah. So you're using out here as that high, and then your retracement down here into the. So I, I can go with that. That 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 that's fine. The March low out here. The problem is so, and that would give you a one to one price projection at 372.54 and 424.73 for the one to one point two seven two out there. Um, however. Uh, you've got to exceed the B point, 316.32, in order for this pattern, and I think you know that, Hector, in order for this pattern to come to fruition. So let's get off of the monthly time frame chart. Now, monthly, just uh, to take a feel, this thing, uh, when it made a, um, what's well, dealing with some resistance from back here in October of 2018, 324 million shares. Right now, today, you're at 268 million shares. And when price was moving up here, it was at 296 million shares. So it's kind of got some light volume. Uh, that would stick out uh, at me at this stage of the game here, Hector. Let's come back and take a look at the daily time frame because there's an A to B equals CD pattern that maybe is a little easier for us to take a look at. And this has a one-to-one -one price projection at 333.11. Now, the B point on this, uh, so the A point would be March 18th. The B point would be uh, March 31st, and the C point down here would be April 3rd. And that gives you that one-to-one -one price projection at 331. Now, when the B point was passed, that was the trading day of March 31st. The B point, 23 million shares. 
Price has not. That's going to be this little red line down in my volume area on the screen. We can see that we haven't seen that kind of volume as price got above that. Uh, Tom's going to be doing a workshop tomorrow. I don't want to give away too much of it. But uh, this potential A to B equals CD pattern here, he'd call that the tiger well, I can't call it a tiger, Garley, but this could uh, end up being a tiger butterfly pattern if it, in fact, makes its way up there. Now, from a trading standpoint, the swing point on this, Hector, on a daily basis, February 20th, and that had 20 million shares in there. And it's been tested a couple different times, light volume. April 27, 12 million shares. Yesterday, 11 million shares. Today is going to be about 11 million share a day. This is struggling just to get into a, a – to, to try to take on this little resistance area, this little swing point, and it's doing it with light volume. And it's also being rejected by the top of that profile. So before I'd be really focused in on the monthly – uh, time frame, I'd really be watching what's going on on the daily time frame. Now, with regard to NVIDIA, we know that it's running into resistance at prior highs out there, doing it with less volume. Always says be careful. Now, be careful in this case here. It says price may pull back to about the uh, 282 level. You would not want to see it close below 282. 282 is the bottom of a bullish structured profile. A close below that would say, okay, there's some other issues going on inside of uh, NVIDIA. So I'm going to come back to the daily time frame out here with my other tools. And do I have any other topping signals? And the answer is I don't. I don't have anything. Stevie's green line is at 289.61. So here's what I just want you to know. You're coming into resistance. We're seeing it play out real time out here. Uh, just keep a, make sure you keep a stop in place. Uh, as far as the average true range on NVIDIA on a daily basis, it's running at about $14.30. So that means that you would use a stop or you could use a stop. That would be 1430 times some Fibonacci expansion level. That would either be the 1.272 or the 1.618. So I think you've got the right swing points selected for your A to B equals CD on the monthly time frame. But I think you've got to deal with what's going on in the daily time frame and forget about that little bigger picture at this stage of the game. Hope that helps you out. Next question here coming in from uh, John. John writes in, hey, Steve, I'm looking to buy UPS. So let's get uh, that fired up on our screen out here, UPS. And let's go back to uh, John's question. And uh, John goes on to say, I was looking to enter a 20% position on the downgrade. It's not acting well considering the market is on a tear. This is why I'm looking to accumulate some. Thanks. Have a great day and be safe. So, thank you, John. Same, same to you. So, the position when you say twenty percent position, I don't know what that necessarily means, but here's what I would like to share with you with regard to UPS. When you do take that trade, whatever trade that might be. By the way, if you were looking to get in the UPS right now from a market profile standpoint, I'm not saying to do it, okay? But if you were. Um, then today would be a day to consider because price is pulled back to the bottom of its daily profile and it is held so far. And that's 95.32. Now we're going to go do more investigative work up here. But the first and most important thing is when you do enter your position, what I'd really like you to do, I'd like you to figure out, John, what your free trading capital is. I'm just going to use $10,000 so then you can use $10,000 increments. And on that $10,000, you're only going to put at risk 1%. Well, on $10,000, that's 100 bucks. Now, what that really means is you're going to take that $100 and you're going to figure out what your stop is. In the case of UPS, the average true range is basically $4. It's $3.90 to be exact out here. You would multiply that times 1.27 or 1.618. I would suggest the latter. We're in a volatile marketplace. You want to have a wider stop. So let's just say that 4 times 1.618 is 6 bucks out there. You take your $100, you divide it by 6, and that is how many shares you would buy out there. So it's something less than 20. I'm just going to throw a 20 as the number. And then you'd multiply 20 times whatever your purchase price is. Let's say it's about 100 bucks. So now you're looking at two grand. Now two grand out of the 10,000, if that's your 20% number, because that would be your exposure to UPS. Okay, I get it. I can dig it because then you're using proper position sizing. However, when I do my proper position sizing for an individual stock, it's different for an individual stock with regard to the exposure versus an ETF or a sector, I should say. So a sector ETF versus the indice. And general rules would be you wouldn't want to put more exposure of your total portfolio, meaning 10% of an individual stock in it. So this would have represented just that 
little thing that we just went through, that process, position sizing, which is if I were to say a third thing that's important out there, it would be understanding position sizing. It would be understanding the risk reward. It would be it would be like, for example, let's say you ran the produce department. You just you get this job first day. You don't know anything about produce, but you you know the the manager's got a lot of confidence and trust in you, and puts you in charge of running the produce department. Yet you have no idea uh, how the tomatoes move through there for that area, or how the other fruit. And if you just start ordering nilly willy, you're going to have a lot of product that you're throwing out. Position sizing is really important on individual stock. Don't cons- consider 10% to be the maximum exposure you would have out there. Sectors inside the S&P, maybe that's around 30%. And the indices, probably 40, 50% out there. We'll be right back. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, uh, Rich, I'm going to ask you, I'm sorry, John, I'm going to ask you to hold off on uh, UPS. Uh, this made a TD9 count top on its daily pattern back here on April 17th. You can see Stevie's red line had turned green back on April 23rd. And as that was turning from red to green, price was on that line. And yesterday's pullback uh, should uh, not have closed below that level. So 92.42 is near you're going to want to watch, but I would be careful. I would just, I would remain patient out here and uh, maybe get back to me in the next couple of days let's go out to oregon and uh, speak with uh, rich rich thanks for calling thanks for holding how are you good thanks for taking my call steve 
You bet. We've got uh, about quickly, a minute and 15 seconds. I was seconds. looking at AMD only because right. it's uh, one of the top holdings in the SOXX. Okay. And AMD didn't have exactly uh, positive forward guidance, and I know the market is uh, looking forward always. Is the SOXX, based on what I'm seeing in AMD and you were even talking about NVIDIA, are they getting ready to top out, or are they just going to keep going up? So in the case of AMD, and I can stick with this here, I will have just enough time to do that out here. Uh, if AMD closes uh, for today below 54.22, and then tomorrow below 54.22, what it is signaling to you is that it's going to pull back to 44.06. Now, this is how we derive that. What we can see is that this, when it made its most recent high out here, it did it on the bar following bar number nine, so it created a TD nine count top. And now price is trading below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. A second day below that will tell you that that is a real breakdown to the downside. And price would pull back to where it had most recently broke out. And that's the 4406 level. So that's what AMD is doing, Rich. We're, we're out of time here. Uh, you'll have to okay. at this stage here kind of make the correlation whether the SACs are going to follow what AMD is doing. But watch tomorrow. You might have a better idea in the case of AMD. Okay, my friend? All right. Thanks very much, Steve. Have a good you afternoon. Bet. Thank, you bet. Thanks for calling. Folks, thanks so much for being here. Stay tuned. You've got two more great hours coming up. you got your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. Tom O'Brien to take us home from 3 to 4. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for the calls, the emails, folks. And have a uh, terrific, uh, a wonderful Wednesday.